Brad Studio XE3 now provides support for SQLite databases. Using your Delphi and C++ applications and the DB Express framework, you can connect to SQLite databases on Windows, 32-bit and 64-bit, and Macintosh OS X. So let's take a look how we can use the Brad Studio XE3 IDE to connect to a SQLite database. First, let's create a SQLite database. We can do that in several ways. We can do it in code. We can use it in the Data Explorer. We can also use the console application with SQLite version 3 to create the database. So I'll use that. Just type SQLite 3 and the name of the database that we want. So here's our test DB and we'll give it an extension. Now that the database is created, we can create tables inside of the SQLite database. So we'll create one table, we'll call it the person table. And inside of the table, we'll have three columns. One is the email address, and we'll make that varchar50. And we'll use that as our primary key, so we'll make sure it's not a null. We'll create a column called first name, and make that varchar25, and last name, and we'll make that varchar25 as well and we'll set the primary key to the email address. Now that we have our table created, we can go in and let's just insert one row so we have some starting data in the table. We'll just say insert into person values my email address, david i at embarcadero.com my first name and my last name. Now if we select star from person, we've got a row of data. We can type dot quit, and we're out of the SQLite console application. Let's go to our IDE. We can start a new project, file new. We could use VCL or FireMonkey, Delphi, and C++ applications to connect to a SQLite database. So let's go and create a FireMonkey desktop application, uh, HD. Let's put down a SQL connection component, and over in the Data Explorer, I'll create a, a connection, SQL test. Let's go and uh, modify that, test db.db. We can test the connection, and you could give it a username and password if you want to. And let's go and use that connection for SQLite. It's called SQLite test. Let's go and make sure we can connect to it. All right, it's connected. Let's put down a SQL query, and we'll connect that up to the SQL connection, and we'll have as our query just select star from person. We'll put a data set provider so that we can provide the metadata and data to a client data set to have an updated datable database. So let's uh, connect that to the SQL query, and let's put a client data set and we'll connect the provider and we will uh, activate it so we can make sure we're getting the data and metadata. And then we'll right mouse click and bring up the live bindings wizard. So we want to create a grid and connect it to a data source. So we'll just use the T grid. And the, uh, since I already have an existing data set, I'll use the client data set. And let's add a uh, data source navigator. Let's go to the bind navigator and add uh, two extra buttons, the apply updates and the cancel updates buttons, and then we'll align the bind navigator to the top of the client area, and then we'll take the grid and align it to the rest of the client area. So now we've got our data, let's uh, bring up the, the live binding designer and see what we've got connected so far. We've got the bind source and the data set and then I'm going to right mouse click on the grid and bring up the columns editor so that I can do a little extra work uh, to define the, the right headings that I want and the right sizes. So here's email. We want that to have a nice heading. And we'll set the width to be uh, 200. And then let's go to the first name field column and give it a nice looking uh, heading. And the same thing here on the the last name. And let's make these both uh, 100 wide. And we can run the application and see that it talking to SQLite. We can insert a new row. Let's put Anders Wilson and we'll save that. And then we can call apply updates. 
and we can close the application and start it up again and see that we've got our data from before. We can continue to do work. So there's working with SQLite uh, in a VCL and FireMonkey application and Delphi and C++. We could take the same FireMonkey application, run it on 32-bit, 64-bit windows, run it on Macintosh. Uh, there's your support for SQLite in EXE3. And where to put the SQLite 3.dll uh, for Windows 32 and Windows 64-bit? I'm running Windows 7, so here you'll find uh, SQLite 3.dll. That's the 32-bit version in SysWow 64. And I've got the same uh, SQLite uh, 3. This is the 64-bit DLL is in System 32. And on my Macintosh computer, uh, the SQLite 3 uh, dilib is already in user lib uh, over on the Macintosh, so it's already set up for you. For additional information about SQLite, go to SQLite.org. There you'll find the SQLite database downloads and documentation about using SQLite.